Hello, everyone. My name is Norm Roblot. I'm a consultant microbiologist at digestivehealthinstitute.org and the creator of the Fast Track Digestion Books and the Fast Track Diet Mobile app. <clears throat> In this video today, we will be making two types of bread, one containing gluten and one that doesn't contain gluten, but we'll be making the bread in a special way. And I'll tell you about that in, in a minute. Um, so this video is for people who suspect they may have non-celiac gluten sensitivity, and they want to do a self-test to determine if gluten is driving their symptoms. So a little background, over 3 million people in the US uh, adhere to a gluten-free diet. And over two thirds of those people, 72%, um, do not have celiac disease. And uh, many believe they have kind of a non-celiac gluten sensitivity. And so what is this condition? Um, it basically refers to people that don't have celiac disease. In other words, they don't have the uh, immunological reaction in their intestines. They don't have blunting or damage to the intestinal villi, but they do report a variety of IBS-like symptoms. So gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, um, in some cases, brain fog or muscle aches or joint pain when they're consuming gluten containing foods. Um, and just a quick note, if you do suspect that you have celiac disease, it is a good idea to get tested. You would have to go on a gluten containing diet for a couple of weeks at least, and then either have a small bowel biopsy or something like an anti-tissue transglutaminase test. And there's other testing you can get. Um, but the question is for people that believe they have non-celiac gluten sensitivity, um, are the symptoms that they're experiencing coming from gluten or something else in gluten containing foods? Uh, the lead suspects being uh, fermentable carbohydrates or sugar alcohols. Now there was a 2018 study uh, that looked specifically at fructans. Um, and these are present in wheat bread. And so they, did this experiment, it was kind of a crossover design with three types of bars. They were all considered low FODMAP snack bars, but in one case, the bars were spiked with gluten. And in one case, they were uh, spiked with fructooligosaccharide, a, 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 um, a FODMAP. And then a third type of bar was a placebo bar. It contained neither gluten nor fructooligosaccharide. <clears throat> and so people in the study uh, would consume one type of bar and then they'd be have a washout period and then consume the other type of bar until everybody in the study group had consumed all three types of bars. And then they, uh, during this time, they monitored the various symptoms that they were having. And I'll put this, uh, the result up. Basically, they showed that the people containing, uh, the people consuming bars, snack bars that didn't contain gluten or the placebo bars that contain neither gluten or fructooligosaccharide had fewer symptoms. And those containing the bars that contain fructooligosaccharide had an increase in symptoms. And from that, they concluded that people with non-celiac gluten sensitivity were reacting to fructans as opposed to gluten. But here's the problem, and, and I'll put this data up. Um, as you can see, regardless of which type of bar people were consuming, they all experienced and reported a lot of symptoms. And um, to understand a little bit more about why people consuming the, the gluten containing bar or the placebo bar that didn't contain, didn't contain fructans, why they were having a lot of symptoms, let's take a look at the ingredients in these bars. And again, I'll put it up. Um, the bars contain maple syrup, rice malt, quinoa flour, brown sugar, sesame seeds, pecans, quinoa flakes, pepitas, which I think of pumpkin seeds, puffed quinoa, uh, there was some macadamia oil in there. Um, the gluten containing bars contain gluten. Uh, some had white uh, chia seeds. Uh, there weren't, uh, there wasn't any galacto oligosaccharides in there. And then the the test bar contained fructooligosaccharide, four grams. So that's a lot of um, higher carb, higher fiber foods. 
And uh, I used the calculation that I created for the Fast Track Digestion books and Fast Track Diet mobile app called fermentation potential. It's based on the nutritional facts of any food along with the glycemic index, kind of a reverse of the glycemic index. And it's looking at all fermentable material, including FODMAPs and sugar alcohols, but also resistant starch and fiber. And when I did the calculation on this on these bars, I came up with a value of about 28 to 32 grams of total fermentable material. So that's a lot of material and fermentable material means it's, it's carbohydrates or sugar alcohols that are not digested and, and absorbed, but they can be fermented by gas producing bacteria in the small or large bowel. And that can lead to a lot of hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide, and then the methanogens can convert some of this hydrogen um, to methane. So you can get a lot of gas and a lot of symptoms. If you um, ask, ask the people on the Fast Track Diet Facebook group, if these bars would give them symptoms, regardless of whether there was fructose like a saccharide, I think most would, would indicate that yes, this much fermentable material would give them quite a few um, symptoms. So with this in mind, I think the best way to test for non-celiac gluten sensitivity is in a low carbohydrate, low sugar alcohol, low fiber background. And the perfect test vehicle, I believe for this, it, to test for non-celiac gluten sensitivity is to make breads uh, using a basic recipe that's an egg white protein sparing bread. And any of you have, have tried making these breads and they're, they're great by the way, a super low carb. They have almost no carbohydrates. So in addition to being devoid of FODMAPs, they're also uh, very little fiber and resistant starch, the two types of fermentable material that are not considered in the FODMAP approach. So let's make some bread and, um, and then you'll be able to, uh, to try these breads and determine if you have sensitivity to gluten or perhaps it was some, it's something else that's bothering you. Okay, to make the bread we're going to make today, you need a couple of baking dishes. I'll be using these silicone dishes, they're nonstick. They go in the oven at 325, believe it or not, and they work great. Uh, you'll need some uh, measuring cups, some measuring spoons, uh, a spatula to, for when you're adding the powders to the uh, egg whites. Um, I'll be using some glass bowls because I'm going to pre-weigh um, uh, out or measure some ingredients before we start. You'll need either an electric hand mixer or a tabletop mixer is nice because it does take about eight minutes or more to get these egg whites really stiff and it's easier if you can just walk away from it for a bit. Uh, in terms of the ingredients, uh, you'll need the um, egg whites either from a dozen eggs. Uh, I find it easier just to use the uh, liquid egg whites that you can buy. It's a cup and a half of those. You'll need some cream of tartar. You'll need a little bit of salt. Um, you'll need two thirds cups of whey protein. Um, you can use collagen peptides as well, but you'd you want to make sure that your protein, the amount of total protein is the same between both breads. Uh, in the case of the gluten-free, you're going to use some egg white protein powder. And that's about, let's see, a third of a cup. In the gluten-containing bread, you're going to replace that third cup protein of egg white protein with um, this vital gluten. And that will that will end up giving you the same amount, essentially, of protein and carbohydrates. Because there are a few, if you look at the nutritional facts, there are a few um, carbs in these, both the egg white and the gluten protein. So in this case, it's four grams. But uh, it does come out to about half a gram of carbohydrate per slice of bread. So it's not really very many carbohydrates at all. So those are the ingredients you'll need. Okay, this is the fun part, let's make some bread. So both the gluten-free and the gluten-containing bread, they're going to be the exact same recipe with one exception. In gluten-free, we're using egg white protein powder, a third cup, and instead of that, in the gluten-containing bread, we're using a quarter cup of gluten powder. 
and that will keep the total carbohydrate and protein counts almost exactly the same between both loaves of bread and per each slice. Um, so I'm going to make these together, get them mixing, and then um, we'll come back in 10 minutes. They have to mix for 10 minutes to get the egg whites uh, stiff. And then we'll take the next step, put them into the uh, silicone baking pans and get them in the oven. Okay, so um, the gluten-free, I'm adding the egg whites along with a half teaspoon of cream of tartare and half teaspoon of salt. And let's get that mixing. You want to mix these on high for about 10 minutes. All right, moving on to the gluten-free bread. Again, one and a half cups of liquid egg whites. Half a teaspoon of cream of tartare, half a teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to um, blend this one by hand, but again, it's going to take about 10 minutes, so um, why don't we regroup when it's ready to, um, to add the other protein powder and put them in the baking pan. Okay, we're back. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes. Uh, I whipped both of these batches on high for about 10 minutes until the egg whites got pretty stiff in each case. Now we need to add uh, to both of them the whey protein, two-thirds of a cup, a third, of, a third cup of egg white protein to the gluten-free bread, also two-thirds of the whey protein to the gluten-containing bread, and one-quarter cup of the gluten. And the best way to get these flours, if you will, these protein powders into the mix without a lot of lumps um, is to just pour the powders directly in to the whipped egg whites while on blending them on low and using kind of a spatula to push it down and being careful not to hit the blades if you can. So let's do that on low um, speed, first with the uh, gluten-free bread. sides a little bit to get it blended in nice and evenly because you don't really want to um, over whip these, these egg whites once you're at this stage. And also the, the less kind of processing and sitting around um, is supposed to be better for the bread rising and having a good consistency. So I do try to get these in the oven. Um, right after they're all blended. And so that one's looking pretty good. Looks like that is ready to go into the baking dish. And I have a baking dish for the gluten-free bread, and then I also have a separate baking dish which I've labeled uh, gluten containing for the other one. So that looks good for the gluten-free bread. the same with the gluten containing bread. Two thirds cup whey protein. And a quarter cup gluten. Good. 
So, using the same spatula, just tuck this, um, each bread mix into the corresponding baking dish. In this case, it's pretty much pourable. Just spread it evenly, and if you have to, sometimes, depending on which protein powders and ingredients you're using, um, you have to kind of poke it down in. In this case, this is liquid enough that we don't need to. Okay. And now for the um, gluten-free bread, same thing. This recipe uh, using the uh, egg white protein powder <clears throat> place of the gluten seems to have uh, you know gives it uh, a little either better aeration from the blending or because of the just characteristics of the egg protein powder this is uh, a little higher I'm gonna push it down in and um, it may rise a little bit more it might be kind of a puffy loaf of bread but I uh, I have made bread with gluten before too, and other than if you have a reaction to it, um, it's quite nice, whether it rises as high or not. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is put these in the oven, 325 degrees, for 30 to 35 minutes. And so um, I'll do that, and then we'll restart the video at that point, when we can take them out of the oven, uh, get them out of the baking dishes, and basically cut them up. See what they're like. Okay, we're back. Um, I took both loaves of bread, put them in the oven at 325 degrees, and baked them for about 30 minutes. And then I shut off the oven and I left them in the oven for another 10 minutes. Some egg white uh, protein breads. Uh, the recipes call for baking them for at least that long, leaving them for another 30 minutes in the oven. I've found that sometimes gives the crust, it makes the crust a bit tough. Um, I like it a little less cooked. So this is the gluten-containing bread. You'll see it didn't rise quite as much as the gluten-free bread that had the egg white protein powder in place of the gluten. Uh, I've taken them out of the baking trays and uh, sliced them up a little bit. A couple of things I wanted to note um, before we taste the bread is uh, you'll see online most of the recipes for egg white bread use allulose, up to a quarter cup of allulose per loaf. It's a non-glycemic sugar, uh, so it won't raise your blood sugar, but it is fermentable by bacteria in the gut. And so when they ferment enough allulose, they'll make gas and give you some symptoms. So that's why we didn't use that um, sugar in this recipe. It might also impart a bit of sweetness to the bread. If you did want something like that, I would recommend something like a Lakanto monk fruit erythritol blend. Um, it's non-glycemic. It's also not a fermentable um, carbohydrate. Um, and the, uh, the erythritol, actually a sugar alcohol, not fermentable either. So it shouldn't provoke much in the way of symptoms. In terms of the facts, the nutrition facts for these breads, um, both loaves of bread, the gluten-free contains about 149 grams of protein per loaf, or um, about 15 grams per slice. The um, gluten-containing bread, uh, also 149 grams per loaf of protein, about 15 grams per slice. Uh, this has no gluten in it. This one has 23 grams per loaf of gluten, or about 2.3 grams per slice. And if and, and this, of course, assumes that you're cutting this in about 10 even slices. So 23 grams of gluten in this slice of bread, which is quite a bit, 
If you think about um, somebody with celiac disease, they can get an immunological reaction with as little as 50 milligrams of gluten. So this is about, this one slice is about 46 times more gluten than what would drive a, a potential reaction in someone with celiac disease. So if you, if you think you have non-celiac gluten sensitivity, uh, there's ample gluten in this bread to test that. If you think you have celiac disease, again, talk to your doctor. Uh, this bread still might be a good way to, when you have to consume gluten prior to getting a, a, a tested for celiac disease, uh, I've purposely structured this bread to contain about a similar amount of gluten as you would get in a normal slice of bread. Um, in terms of carbohydrates, there's five grams per loaf in the gluten-free bread um, and six grams per loaf in the um, gluten-containing bread. So that's 0.6 grams per slice, 0.5 grams per slice. So they're both very low in carbohydrate. They have almost the exact same amount of protein in them. The only difference really is gluten. So let's, um, let's do a little taste test. A little butter on the gluten containing bread and a little bit of butter on the uh, gluten free bread. Mm. I make this type of bread a lot. Both of these breads, if you can tolerate the gluten or not. Great to have with butter, with peanut butter and a sugar free jelly. You can make a grilled cheese with them, you can make a ham and cheese, you can make, put a burger on them. So if you're on a ketogenic or a low-carb lifestyle, they're great alternatives. And now for the one with gluten. Mm. So even though I myself have a history of chronic acid reflux, I've written a couple of books on that, I get some IBS symptoms if I'm on a high carbohydrate diet. So I tend to stay low carb and I especially watch the fermentable carbs that I write about in the Fast Track Digestion series. But I've tried this several times. I have no reaction to gluten. So if you don't, being able to include gluten in, in your baking is just amazing because it has so many other you know, miraculous properties. It's, it, you'll see there's a lot more air holes in this. It's very spongy and soft. It imparts a lot of great qualities. Um, the gluten-free bread is also quite good. To my taste, it's a little bit drier. It's a little less spongy. Um, so if you are somebody that tries this and you can tolerate gluten without a problem, um, it is a pretty amazing substance. If you have celiac disease or if you do, in fact, get a strong reaction to this well, that's something to uh, think about. So thanks a lot. If you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll try to get another video up in the coming weeks. Thanks.